Today we've got a walk-in freezer that's not working. They just turned it on for the beginning of the season and they said it didn't run. So we're going to check it out and see what we got going on. We just called the people and they're heading this way. Then we'll go ahead and get it opened up and see if we got power and start with the basics here. It's got its final resting place here because it doesn't like to set still. Got to like seat belt it in. So I just went inside and checked the evaporator section. It's not uh, running. You can hear the solenoid. The uh, heaters are not on. Looks like we're in defrost possibly. Let's rotate our clock, which is not wanting to, oh my. Not wanting to turn at all. Holy crap. Yeah, that clock's jacked. Man, oh man. That thing is bad. Uh, you can see all the dust. A lot of stone driveways around. A lot of things going all over the place. So we have uh, both legs of power. So let's check to see if we got a signal. Chances are, I'm thinking it's probably the low pressure switch. So we just checked the low pressure switch and it is open. So the fans aren't gonna run because the thermostat inside hasn't gotten cold enough. The compressor ain't running because it's open. So let's see what our pressures are and if it's a defective switch or if we've lost our refrigerant charge. Let's see what we got. Uh-oh, that ain't good. Okay. Well, let's check the high side, make sure that solenoid's opened up. I don't want to make that mistake. I've done that before, start looking for a leak. And didn't realize that the solenoid or whatever wasn't really energizing, though you think it is, or you hear it, and you think it's opening. See what we get here. Heck, these freaking valves could be shut for all we know. You never know. Some people want you to shut them down for the season and completely pump them down and valve them off. Oh no. Look at that. Nothing there either. Let's take a peek in here. Oh, those are awful loose. They're open. Look at that water in there. That's nice. All right. Good grief. So at this point, they need us to look for a leak. I think we could probably do a visual look around here. The sight glass there shows green still, at least. That's good. Oil anywhere. So. Hmm. see anything in here looks pretty good she's definitely energized she's hot I don't see any place where it would be leaking at yet it kind of goes across through that wall there so we'll follow that over there but yeah um got to get some pressure on it and we'll start sniffing might as well make sure that's either 22 or 404 hopefully it's 404 okay so we went ahead and put some trace gas in there and uh, so I didn't put in very much but just dump some liquid in there and then oops we don't want that that's the last dang thing I really wanted to have happen high dollar disconnect box there that was half ass installed man oh man that is some good stuff right there. You see that? You don't, it's not, that's not the way it was built. That right there is why you hire professionals to do your electrical. What's, um, uh-oh, what's that right there? Do you see that right there? There's a dark spot. I bet we've got our leak right there. Didn't see that. 
All right, let's go ahead and stop adding nitrogen to it. Let's get this thing opened up and take a look in there. So we sprayed it and nothing's really bubbling. I'm gonna add a little more pressure to it and then uh, might grab the ultrasonic. My friends over at Inficon sent me this to try out. It's the Whisper. You know I like my uh, other one that I've used quite a bit, but this got a couple neat uh, features to it. It um, can do it with and without headphones, but uh, without the headphones it does beeping, whereas with the headphones you can actually hear it. Uh... So you can do that or you can just hear the, the squishy noise that it makes when you rub your hands together. Well, as soon as I got over to it, I can hear it. Something's going on in there. Holy crap. Not seeing anything. It sounds like it's my freaking hose, but let's take my hose off, see if that eliminates it. Yeah, my hoses are leaking. That sucks. I've had a lot of problems with my hoses. I think it's time for new ones. Doggone it, I was really hoping. Obviously that's not it, so I was all excited. I'm hearing something in here though. on that valve we only got about 82 pounds we only have about 82 pounds on it so I don't have a lot that uh, liquid snot there is like thicker and I'll get out so I'm gonna get in there and investigate a little closer all right as soon as I tightened up the cap it stopped pulled the cap off and looked at it look at that green crap I don't know what the if that's something they did at the factory or what I've never seen that before. There's some sort of aluminum cap or something. Normally it's brass just straight in there. Somebody did something they shouldn't have done. Looks like somebody uh, half baked a uh, repair there. Let's take a squirt here and see what we got going on. Oh wow. Look at that. That seal is toasty critter. She is jacked to the max. You have an option here. You can either cut it out or you can uh, tighten the cap up. The uh, seal in that uh, brass piece that's in between there is obviously shot. I would say either it got damaged when they were putting it together or they overheated it when they brazed it in. But that's definitely a heck of a leak right there. We'll double check the rest of the system. We ain't going to stop just there because that's never a good idea. Alright, so I'm thinking we're probably okay. I don't have a lot of pressure in here, but I do have at least... 90 pounds and if it's a big leak like we have right now that's enough to lose everything we should caught it so i would say that one we got out there is the only one i did tighten it up and it's not showing anything with uh, 90 pounds of pressure but that's on the hot gas discharge so <clears throat> i'm probably going to go ahead and cut that thing out i've had to do it before and i just don't trust it it's going to possibly heat up and and leak again later and i don't like uh, possibilities of callbacks so not a big deal whether that thing's there or not, so we'll just get rid of it. We're going to go ahead, we're going to cut out that valve, we're going to replace that clock, we're going to replace the contactor, and replace the dryer there. I checked the head of the TXV, and then as I got looking around, I seen stickers that showed that it had a 404 orifice. I just got permission. I yanked the... Uh, pressure switch off there and just so you know there was no Schrader core in there so don't try to change that thing live they didn't do anybody any favors by doing it that way yeah it does have a depressor on it and it's got threads if that's got threads we're gonna put a Schrader core in there that way we don't have to recover the whole unit if it freaking uh, goes bad we're gonna go ahead and get that out of there uh, that's probably hooked on the back side I bet you yeah, it is. So we're going to have to manhandle that and get it out of there. I'm not lifting the whole freaking unit up. All right, so we got it out of there. 
before y'all have a flip fit, I just went ahead and cut it. You never do this, because you'll get shavings in the system. Which is why I went ahead and cut it there, but then used a pipe cutter down here. So I had it out of there so I could get underneath of it and actually get it out. If you notice inside there, let me turn on the light here. You can see the blackness in there. Let's just say that blackness didn't get in there probably from the factory. So my plan is to just leave it right in there like that right there. That's the nub from the other side. I unbrazed the one side and it uh, broke off uh, inside there. So the diameter of that should fit right into that. And that's most likely, I bet you, five eighths. So um, we're just going to put a little piece in there between here and there. That uh, headmaster there is 185 pounds, so we'll remember that for a little bit later. Hopefully that works okay. But definitely don't want to get no shavings or no crap inside that headmaster or any of the other components because things don't work real well when you do that. But that's one of my little shortcuts to get things out. I don't mind doing it with a saw as long as you use a pipe cutter at a different location so that you don't get the shavings into the system. So as you can see, that's where it broke off at. Then we just cut it right there. And then that ended up not being uh, threaded on the bottom. Good to go. Got everything all cleaned up just for easier breezing. So I'll just get that little thing here over top of there and I'll just sleeve that in there. This kind of works out good. I'm able to purge right backwards through all the valves and then it's venting out there. So as soon as I get any remaining uh, non condensables and oxygen out of there. We'll uh, start brazing on that. The solenoid's closed on the other side. I could have always closed the uh, valve there. We got the uh, pipe in there and got a little clamp I built. Put some uh, double sided tape on there, foam tape. We've got uh, a Schrader core in the port there, so if we ever have to change the uh, switch we will be able to and I've got a zoom spout oiler that I've changed over to PoE oil so that's what I'm going to use there on the threads reverse this thing a little bit and then we'll get it screwed on there and I got the new contactor in there how to use some of the extra little jumpers there I kind of call them piggybacks these uh, little gizmos here they kind of come in handy to get the extra spot there so uh, most of those wires are control wires and they're on there pretty good. Crimp down any of the ones that were a little bit loose. Got uh, the main power wires under the heavy lugs. I uh, put the clock in the new case here. That's going to help keep the dust out of it. Um, I'm just going to seal that up a little bit, but even at that, I mean, the dust getting in there is going to be a whole lot less likely than what it was before. The uh, screw right there can be gotten to from there which I'll put a little piece of tape on the back side of that it's gonna be better than what it was the other one had a date code of 05 so you know it's lasted 16 years now so it's uh, you know it, it did well for the years that it's out here I mean you've got stone driveways well it's paved now but previously it was probably stone had only extend one wire for number three there which worked out pretty okay uh, the rest of the contactors and switches and relays seem to be all right. Just got to get a couple wire ties in there. We got the filter dryer on. I went ahead and went with a sweat dryer. Um, give it a little squirt of uh, gray paint. I uh, built me a little uh, nipple there to get me into the uh, dryer because of the area that I had to cut out for the other dryer, just easier. That's where that swedge tool comes in really handy. We finally got the vacuum pump on there. Now what I could have done and probably should have done, I sometimes get one track minded, is when I was doing the electrical stuff there, I should have went ahead and done my filter dryer first. That way it could have been evacuating while I was doing the electrical. That way you're making more use of your time. Sometimes you forget. I'm not gonna spend all day trying for the perfect vacuum. It had a green indicator. It had, you know, not gone into a negative pressure because the pressure switch cut it out. When I was doing the uh, brazing on the filter dryer, I was able to purge through the uh, receiver there. Went ahead and put some oil on the threads, got it all back together, tightened the packing nut on the uh, valve there. Condenser coil probably could use wash, but 
we spent a little bit of time trying to do it right, so we may not spend a lot of time worsening it out right now. I know I'll probably be back for their ice cream machine and uh, may end up doing it then. It's one of them things where it's Monday and uh, I'm sure there's things coming in that we need to get done. Just gotta balance everything. We're uh, using a cheater there that everybody flips out about. One I built, I put a fuse on it, I got a ground on it, and I'm going right off my neutral and hot leg right there on the block, which is about as simple as you could ask for. Um, to each their own. Uh, there's no plugs out here, which is kind of, well, you know what, there was a plug right there. So, whatever. Um, probably ain't turned on. While we're waiting on that, I kind of take a look at the old bag here. Like I said, I just got this MC version of the uh, Tech Pack. The little shelf thing is kind of cool. Uh, one thing I don't like is there's no way to really keep these things out of the dirt. Let's say it just got done raining and you got a lot of water on the ground. I mean, yeah, I'm hooking it here to make it easier, but man, when you unhook it, that gets right in the freaking dirt and everything else, which there's really not a lot you can do with it other than put it on something. I mean, it is a tool bag. It is made to get uh, dirty. The only thing I see uh, that probably isn't the heaviest duty of things is the straps. Um, I mean, the nice thing is that they did put the uh, shoulder straps there, so if these do become too big of an issue, you could always probably chop them off. They do have a neat uh, Velcro thing there to hold those up to keep them out of the way, which has been pretty cool so far. Still waiting to hear back from Vito on the uh, rivets, why the hell they put them on the bottom. Uh, it just seems kind of odd. Just taking a basic look inside there. It's uh, the thermometer and my extensions. You know, you can only squeeze so much in these top ones here. The top pieces here are really short, so you can't get anything really long in there. Other side, like most people, it's just kind of the leftover stuff that I don't use very often, which is why I put it there. The uh, tape holder thing. I was going to try the drill there, but the drill release really is loose on this one compared to my other bag. Not really using the bag to full capacity yet. These do pull out, but we'll go into a full review at a later time. All right, so we finally got it vacuumed down. It held blank off. I didn't go for the perfect 500, but it did stop at 0.00 as far as leak rate, which is what I was in, uh, more concerned with. What I'm doing is boiling off the refrigerant. I don't have all day to boil refrigerant. Um, I don't think there was really any moisture in there. If there was any moisture in there, it wouldn't have, it would have raised. I would suspect it's probably gonna hold maybe 14 pounds. That's a pretty good size receiver. So we're finally running the fans. Wanted to make sure they were running before I continue to add refrigerant. Add a full sight glass. Uh, which I haven't added for the winter charge yet, which this doesn't run in the winter anyway. See my liquid line didn't get uh, included in the squishy clamps. So it's gonna have to get wire tied for now. There's nothing at the bottom. They chopped it completely off and put the priority in the uh, electrical there. We're holding steady there. We only held about 11, 12 pounds. So we're gonna put about 15%, 10% more. Make sure we don't have any vibrations on anything. Nothing's rubbing into something. Calculated out to about a pound and a half area. So, I'm gonna go ahead and put this into defrost. And heard one click. Well, that sure as hell didn't pump down very far, did it? Well, I guess it is a freaking scroll compressor and they're a little bit worried about going into a vacuum. Our heater elements are pulling about 11 and a half. 16 there. Let's uh, kick her back out. It's on awfully quick. Let's see where the settings are at here. Looks like they got them about 22 with about 25. So that gauge is slow to react in time. So not a big thing there. Let's go ahead and get the time set right. About 11-ish area. Unfortunately, it's gonna go right into a defrost here in a little bit. Don't really need that. So, probably fast forward through that. I'm gonna do that for a while until I get all the cover on, then we'll change it. 43 in here, set for negative four with a seven differential. So she's dropping. Pressures are looking pretty good. 98 liquid, negative nine suction. Got the line wire tied up with some big old thick wire ties there. It's 
better than what it was. They'll last a little longer than just standard wire ties. Check for vibration areas there where it came through, which would be nice if they would have sleeved that, but it's been in this long. I am pretty sure we did not install this just from the way it was installed. I know as sure as heck we wouldn't do that. I uh, went ahead and put a, a bolt on that to keep uh, the people from pulling the disconnect, but yet still makes it so we can get into it. Uh, Sight glass is staying full. I did a uh, pump down again and used some heat and my uh, infrared, and it's somewhere between 70% area, so we're good on our receiver levels. Uh, the box isn't at temperature. I'm not going to miss with superheat or anything like that because it's been working. I know uh, the vacuum helps. We don't have any leaks. Uh, we already done the preliminary pressure test, ultrasonic and refrigerant both. Uh, and then uh, we did some things there to make the defrost clock hopefully last longer than the last one did. Got the new contactor on and uh, the new filter dryer. So we were starting to pack it up and then I noticed it was still getting some bubbles. I ended up having to add about two more pounds to this thing. Box ain't at temperature, so I assume that we're finally starting to drop more, starting to feed better, things like that. And uh, now it's just keeping pretty good. It wasn't flashing bad, but I was getting some little micro bubbles in there. Did a pump down on it. It did fine. Like I said, I didn't think that receiver seemed as full as what it was, and that's a pretty good size receiver. We should be good now. I re, uh, rewrote it on the inside there. That sounds a little more like it. It may even hold as much as 16 and a half or 17. I can't stay much longer, so I've got to go. If you guys enjoyed the video and you want to see more like it, make sure you subscribe. Don't forget to share it. Leave me a comment down below. And until next time, we'll catch you on the next one.